Of course, not all Americans share the views of Mr Bolton or his directness of speech. Julia Swig has written a book, Friendly Fire, which warns her fellow Americans about the damage the swagger of recent years has done and warns too about the effect that anti-Americanism is having inside the United States. The fact of French derision toward the United States is a window into the broader global derision toward the United States. And that, I think, does create a backlash internally that's something I worry about. There's a kind of isolationist feeling in the land today, a rise of xenophobia, a nativism that you can see in the debate over immigration, this fear and insecurity that others are going to take our jobs or come and attack us or um, penetrate our borders or somehow dilute who we are, encroach upon our Americanness. And what we've lost is a sense that we as a nation are better when we're plugged into and part of the world, that we as a nation have been formed by others coming here, by their capital, by their people, by their culture, and that without being plugged into the world, we would stop being ourselves. Do you believe that the United States is an empire? I don't see the United States as an empire. Why don't you? I don't think we're capable of being an empire, and I think that our impulse to control the the directions and forces of history in parts far and wide is not met by enough sort of capacity, will, institutional drive, or, or domestic political support for that sort of global role. And that's why I think there's just such a big disconnect. And we're not an empire as the UK was. We're just not. It's not in our DNA. So we're a if, hybrid. So if you go to a, an average American town out in the Midwest and you say to people, is it right that the United States should try to control the world? What are they going to say to you? I think they'd laugh. Americans don't understand how much influence we have or are perceived to have. And so if you said, hey, you know, Joe Budweiser, truck driving, red state inhabitant, should we be an empire? That would just be a joke. I think there's a sense that it would be nice if everyone would follow them, but we can't possibly make everyone do it. And that's the kind of rugged individualism, too, that undergirds American ethos, which is that the concepts of freedom and liberty, when we say them, others hear empire and others hear imperialism. But what is meant is freedom from the state, freedom from the monarch, freedom to choose. Is there another sense, though, in which Americans can be rightfully accused of being empire building, and that is that they have such a high regard for their own system of government, and they seriously think that around the world, if people adopted it, they'd be better off. Sure, we have deep historic roots. We are the shining city on the hill. We see ourselves and our model as eminently reproducible, believe that others should want to be like us. And that's an ideology. It's a philosophy. It has driven our expansion within our own contiguous borders and helped undergird this sense that we can do right unto others and they'll want to follow us. It's conceptual empire. It's not the construction of empire. This is the Avenue Franklin Roosevelt, an American president who is truly in the heart of Paris. Roosevelt, the man who helped defeat Nazi Germany and liberate these streets, is celebrated here. And the point many French people make is that they would celebrate George Bush too, if they agreed with him. The source of anti-Americanism is plain, they say. As one writer put it, it's the policies, stupid. Well, up to a point. Here in Paris, there is plenty of evidence to be found that anti-Americanism is way more than that. The kind of anti-Americanism fostered by French intellectuals down the centuries revolves around hatred of what America is, not what it does. Franklin Roosevelt. Franklin Roosevelt. There is, of course, another strand of French thinking, a tenuous strand stretching back as far as the American Revolution and the support for that revolution which came from France. There are French people who adore America, love the place for what it is and what it has done. Among them, the writer and political analyst Dominic Moisy. When I say the words the United States of America to you, what, what comes into your mind? Gratitude. I uh, belong to a generation 
that was born right after World War II. In many ways, I would not have been born without the Americans taking part into that war. My father uh, spent two years of his life in a German concentration camp and uh, was liberated on May 8, 1945 by uh, American GIs. This is my America, the America that freed Europe. We went to see José Bové the other day, and what he is worried about, he says he likes individual Americans, but what he says he doesn't like is the threat, as he sees it, as globalization. And he sees globalization very much driven by the United States in order to satisfy the needs of U.S. commerce. Well, I think it's probably inevitable that the backlash on globalization would translate itself with a flurry of anti-Americanism. There is no alternative to globalization. It's there to last. It concerns us all. Yes, we should try to make it more human, but the idea that what's wrong with globalization is purely the result of the United States is a gross oversimplification of reality. What corresponds to the reality is the fact that after the collapse of the Soviet Union, there was something like the unipolar moment of the United States, where America had all the ingredients of power, except one, the will of its citizens to play a world role. What we are witnessing right now is, in fact, the rise of a multipolar world, which is what the French wanted so badly. But, ironically, the drama of the French is that the world is becoming multipolar without them, i.e. without Europe. We may have been exhausted by the 20th century, and it may be that in these early years of the 21st century, the dream of Europe is accompanied with deep frustrations and the object of those frustrations is the United States of America. We look at them as a mirror reflecting our weaknesses, our frustrations, our sense of envy, our fear. Numéro 152974 en provenance de Moscou. The weird thing about the French, about intellectual anti-Americanism here, is how unconfident it is. There are some things the French do wonderfully well. Sex is one of them. Nobody goes to the United States in search of eroticism, at least I hope they don't. And nobody goes to the United States for lessons in the running of high-speed trains. Here at Gare de Lyon, you can hop on a TGV to Geneva or Marseille and they really do go fast and it really is reasonably priced and it really does keep people off the roads. It works. They don't do it in America, but here in France they do and nobody's stopping them. The anti-Americans see the US as a steamroller, but we are not all going to be crushed. We have the power to take what we want. I can see many iPod wearers in the crowds here, and we can reject what we don't. We can choose our destination. En provenance de Dijonville, va entrer en gare, voie 5.